What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Two Car Garage on our Yamaha Virago project behind me. Today we have to build our cables. So everything's sort of in place in terms of where it's going to go. So now is the perfect time to build our throttle cable and our clutch cable. They both need to be custom made because we have a completely different setup, right? The lengths need to be different. We're using clip-ons instead of the big cruiser handlebars. So what we have to do is get universal kits with stock lengths and a bunch of different ends. We're going to have to reuse some of the ends off of our own cables and build the new ones. The soldering pot is warming up now. I think I'm gonna start with the clutch side and then go to the throttle side. So follow along, let's get it done. Now before you throw your old cables away, you might have to reuse some of the ends. So like this is the end, the little nubbin or whatever that goes into the clutch cover. We're gonna to have to reuse that. The long sort of universal length cables usually come with one already crimped metal end on it. So we take that end I like to start at the handlebars, so that fits, we're good to go. I like to start at the handlebars here and then run our cable along the route that we're going to use and then we can mark how long this cable needs to be. So we start with the outer cable, the sheath if you will, and we get that length set. So we make our little mark. That marker is awesome. That's like the Milwaukee uh, inks all, but it's like the metallic, so gold metallic. It literally will mark anything. Now this is like a metal and Teflon lined cable, so it crushes a little bit when you cut it. So you just have to sort of ream it out with a pick and then file down the metal edges. That way it can attach easily and the cable can slide freely. It comes with all these like different you know attachments and barrels and everything so you just pick which one you need for your application get it set so now we finish the outer cable or at least you know figuring out the length of our outer cable now we have to get our inner cable so we run it through we attach it and then we figure out how long this needs to be matching up the ends here so that's the end that goes in the clutch cover figure out make sure it's the right size and that's the one we need Get it all set up and then we should be good to go and we can cut that inner cable to length and then we just solder it on. Trick of the trade is to make your mark for your length with the barrel, with the attachment on it because that might add or subtract a little bit of length. This really is like a measure 18 times cut twice. Um, wait, that. Well, anyway, uh, this is called bird caging. So you put the end of the cable inside of this bird cager tool and then wait. You have to put the end on first, of course, so that you don't seal off the cable before you put your barrel on. So make sure you take the end out of your mouth and then put it on and then you can bird cage the end. So what this does is it creates not only a soldering seal, but a mechanical seal. So that end can't come off. Dip it in the flux dip it in the solder for about 10-15 seconds and you get a nice end real nice end now our cables done check it for fitment and for function the clutch cable turned out great attaches well actuates well let's move over to the throttle side now the throttle side's a little bit more complicated just because you have a lot more stuff to go in, right? You have the whole carburetor, you have the 90 degree turn of the throttle housing, you have adjusters, but the general process of it is the same. Measure 85 times, cut once, right? Ream out that outer sheath, just like we did on the clutch side. The only difference is that carburetor has to be in the exact spot that you want it. And you need to be sure that you're routing that cable in the exact way that you want it. So we feed our cable in through our 90 degree top cap, through our adjusters, and then we can put it through the sheath. We have to get that carb set up. So now's the time to attach the spring and the slide to get that carburetor nice and set. We need to be sure that it's static so that that slide isn't open at all. We don't want any tension on that slide when we're hooking it up, right? Because we can adjust for tension. So with the carb perfectly static, now we cut our cable the exact length and then we can move over and start soldering on our ends. Here we actually remembered to put on our barrel first before bird caging at this time. So now we should be good to go. I had to top off the solder pot a little bit with some solder. So I like to just sort of bunch it up, dip it in there to smelt it in 
and just inhale that sweet, sweet lead vapor, you know. Be sure you dip it in the flux and then 10 to 15 seconds in the solder pot and you're making bacon, baby. Our throttle cable is all finished up and if you listen really closely, you can hear our Makuni slide slapping the bottom of the travel, which is what you want to hear. That means it's closing properly. This is also a short pull throttle, so it's pretty much a quarter turn to full open. This thing, I think, is only going to have two speeds uh, off and full throttle. So listen up and you can hear it function. Let's test out both of our controls here. We have a nice clutch pull and a nice crisp throttle. You know, some of my friends asked me how long it takes to edit these videos. Generally, for me anyway, for one of these like 10 minute videos, it'll take me a few hours to edit. So that is a long time. I really appreciate you guys hitting the like button, leaving comments below, and most of all, subscribing. It just encourages me to keep hitting that uh, record button and spending the time necessary to edit these videos. Thank you guys so much for watching as we get closer and closer to finishing our Virago 920 build. Stay tuned for the next video. It's going to be a good one. Thanks.